Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the crystals album artwork templates from the Photoshop files section of the Studio AAA website. Crystals is a pack of eight separate mockups you can add your own imagery to in Photoshop that generate reflections and chromatic aberration and distortions and all sorts of other little details that would appear if you were to look at an image through a cut crystal. The effects in this pack are kind of kaleidoscopy inspired and they're all fully editable because they're all done with smart objects. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works, how to put your image in it and how to edit everything as well. So this is the crystals page. Once you download it, it is quite big. You will get these PSD files. They all work using the same method. So I'm going to open up number one and show you how that works in Photoshop. So if you're new to Photoshop, the way this works is just through one smart object and a smart object is a type of layer within your Photoshop file that can be edited and have effects applied to it but still remain editable at the point before you applied the effects. So it's kind of like a way to instance your image or layer or your artwork to ensure that it's editable mm -hmm. later on and so that you don't destroy whatever you're working on with filters and effects and stuff. You'll see here in all of the PSD files there is a source smart object that you can edit by double clicking this layer then you've got the crystal effects folder and in here are all of the different angles and the red green and blue channels for each of these like little reflections in the corner so while you can go and edit all of this all you actually need to do is open up the smart object for the source and replace this image with whatever you want i didn't actually prepare an image so i'm just going to use a portrait from unsplash i'll leave whatever i end up using linked in the description i'll leave whatever i end up using linked in the description so you can drag that in or you can go file and use place embedded or link links or whatever you want. Scale it up to wherever you want it. I just went for this one because it's got a similar color palette but yeah place it wherever you want it within this smart object and then just save with control s. Don't save with file save as or don't save it in any other way. When you save it like this as you can see it's going to go and update all the smart objects that I just showed you before. So now the new image is showing up through the filter you can see that some of the colors here are a little bit too harsh compared to what we had before so if I just revert the change. This is kind of well balanced whereas this looks a little bit harsh. So if you open up the crystal effects folder there are folders within that folder for each sort of section of the effect. There's also this overlay and sort of a glow effect that appears on where the lines would be on the crystal but what we're looking for here is just changing some blend modes. So if I go into the lower right you'll see the first layer here is called change blend mode. So you can either literally just go and flick through to something like screen or lighten which might be a little less harsh or you can just go and adjust the opacity if you want so if i change from color dodge to screen and then just remember that and go through and change the rest of these to the screen blend mode as well like this obviously just take a second and then just do the middle one as well so it's a little bit less harsh if you want though another way you can make changes is by going back into the source file the source smart object and you can literally just add adjustment layers here um if you wanted you could literally do design work in this smart object and add text and whatever else you might want to add but for this I'm just going to do some basic adjustments control s to save and then come back into the main psd and if you want you can keep editing keep messing with the blend modes so aside from the adjustment layers you can add in the smart object and the blend modes you can also come into each individual section here and edit the chromatic aberration just by moving around these labeled layers so if you look at the upper right section here I can move the red channel around it's got its own layer the green or the blue or you can edit the blur effects on each of these layers to make them more or less visible. My main point is everything remains editable. The only things that I would avoid changing are the masks because obviously as you can see if you move the masks around uh, it sort of stops making sense. So just to show that in another one of the files if I double click into here pull in an image I've just got another random portrait image just pull in another random portrait image from Unsplash put it wherever you want Control S to save, wait while it updates all the smart objects and it will auto populate into all the reflections. Now in the event that this doesn't update, I know these are quite big files so if you're on like an older computer or if something crashes and it doesn't work, as long as you've updated the source smart object all you then need to do is come to layer smart objects and then just click on update all modified content and it will refresh the smart objects for you. So it won't change any of the setup, it will just change the layers in your document to like synchronize with the smart objects. And then just at the end, just to see if this looks cool, um, this is an image obviously of Earth 
from the New York Public Library. It's the first one that came up when I searched for one. Um, so if I just, I think this will look cool. If I just save that, wait for it to update again. While you're using this, you are going to be waiting for things to update just because the effect is very layer heavy. Yeah, so you can get some like cool abstract effects out of using things that are spherical um, or portraits that are center on. Looks quite cool as well. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can throw anything from my portfolio in that is like particularly spherical. Um, so this is just a random orb I rendered ages ago. So if I just test how that looks. So yeah, that looks weird. But again, like it can be used to generate some like abstracty cool stuff. The main issues that you'll have with these mock-ups, I'll try and show you now with this one. So if I pull this in, this is an album cover for an album called Imaginal Disc, but you can see it's quite overexposed, like it's quite light. The blend modes that are in all of these are all set by default to blend modes in the lighting category. So if you're using an image that's already quite light, you might need to just go and change some of these over to like the matching blend mode in the darken category. So if you want to know more about how that works, I did do a, did a video on how every blend mode works, but basically it'll default to color dodge. And if I just update this now, so let me save that in there. So as you can see, it's super overexposed. So you would just need to go and change the color dodge down to like a color burn. So if I just quickly go through and change all those, as you can see, it looks a little bit less intense now. And then again, like you can obviously go and do some adjustments to like calm it down a little bit, control S to save those changes and then wait for it to render. And then you can continue to tweak like whatever blend mode you want to do. Obviously this one doesn't look great, especially around the eyes. So I'd probably just mess with like the chromatic aberration a little bit. But main point is that everything remains editable once you've got your image in there. And it's just a case of changing to the right blend mode. So if you've got a very light image, change to a darker blend mode. This one I would maybe just need to desaturate, but Around the eyes and the lips here, it doesn't look that good, but this hand and the disc up at the top looks quite cool. Um, I don't know why I picked this one, just like just an album cover I had saved in my downloads folder. But if you find you have made too many changes and you've messed it up and you want to go back to the original, you can also just go file and revert and it will just reset the whole setup back to normal like that. So I've been ill recently. I don't know if you can tell. So I'm just catching up on making these tutorials. If you're new around here, I make one free design resource at studiotriplea.com every single month. And I have been doing that all year. As soon as I'm caught up with this type of tutorial, I will be going back to doing the usual content on here. But yeah, like I said, I've just been ill. So I need to catch up on this kind of thing. If you did grab these album art templates, thank you. I really appreciate the support. If you need any further help with them that wasn't covered in this video, feel free to send me an email. And other than that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.